2017 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees to order. Um, roll call Judith Cavallaro. Present. Present. Joe Carroll is absent. Uh, he, he indicated earlier to us that he had a work conflict tonight. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Nick Rico here, and I'm Charles Anderson. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes of September 28th, 2017, regular monthly meeting. Uh, no. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the minutes. Approval of the minutes of October 26th. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, that's right. Election of officers. Um, yeah, we just had an election. We've had a little change in the membership of the board. Um, I'd like to welcome Judy Cavallaro to her first meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees and congratulate you on a successful election campaign. Um, we look forward to working with you in the coming years and uh, hope it'll be a really good experience for you. I'm happy to be here and I hope I can get up to speed very quickly and contribute. And anything that we can do to help, we will. And obviously Dave is a good resource uh, for you. And uh, yes, he is. also be providing you with uh, hard copies of our rules and regulations, um, bylaws, etc. And I asked Dave to provide copies of those to all of the board members just as a refresher because they are available online, but I'm guessing Nobody spends a lot of time browsing our website looking for those. And, uh, yeah, so, um, all right. Uh, so, election of officers. I just wanted to yes. add one thing welcoming, not just welcoming Judy, but also thanking Rob, if he's watching, for his many years of service nine. to the, to the, sure. nine, to the he, trustees, too. I, would, I, I assumed we would do that at the end of the meeting on the we trustee do, comments, do. but we can do it again. Uh, so, for election of officers, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move a slate of officers to start with Charles Anderson as chairman, Nick Rico as vice chairman, Aubrey Strauss as clerk, and Jason Greenlee as treasurer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ben. Uh, any other nominations from anyone on the floor? If not, a motion to close nominations. So Moved and second to close nomination. Second, is there a second? Second. Second by Jason. Uh, all in favor of closing nominations? It's unanimous. Six to zero. Um, all right, then the main motion on the floor is the slate as uh, moved by Nick. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? None opposed. It's unanimous. Six to nine. Thank you, Nick. All right, now we can move on. Um, let me uh, express my appreciation quickly um, for your confidence in me to serve as a chairman for another year. Um, uh, I've enjoyed the past year and the support and the cooperation of all the board members, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the coming year will be uh, have some challenges in it, but I think all working together, we'll get through, uh, we'll get through any issues that, uh, that arise. And uh, for the other members of the uh, offices that have just been elected, uh, thank you for your willingness to serve in those capacities and uh, for the extra time that you'll be putting in uh, in serving for those. And I know with staff's help, um, we'll be able to minimize um, the amount of time that, that that demands from your regular schedules. So thanks again. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes, uh, minutes of October 26, 2017, regular meeting. Uh, 
one thing that Mr. Chairman has said. Any corrections to be offered? Page six. Page six, second paragraph, first sentence. And <coughs> Pookie has lived, needs a D. The number needs to be corrected also. Um, the next paragraph, eight on the chairman Anderson. No, five, five, six. Oh, okay. And the last line where it starts, Mr. Rico. Question if it was one and a half years ago, which is movie A. I did not get the bottom one. Bottom of the bottom of page six. When is it? Yes. Okay. Yes, sure. And then on page 12, I think we're going to tell you already. But the paragraph under Custy's comments, first one, last line, seeing the rain the next couple weeks. Next Mr. Viola, in his comments, he said he also likes Piggly's ice cream. We need an S. We love Piggly's ice cream. They make great stuff. Thank you. And um, under Mr. McSorley's comments, third line, probably don't know that there has been the word there. All right, any other corrections to the author? No. Okay, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? No. One opposed. abstain. One abstention. So, Judith Cavalier offers the Five to none with one abstention. <clears throat> Okay, Superintendent Operations Report, David. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of October uh, was included in your packet. Our average flow for the month was 1.12 million gallons per day. And our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 96% uh, and TSS removal, or total suspended solids. Concentrations were 15 and 6 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of October is included in your packet. We had several days with zero, zero flow reported. Uh, we determined that there is a glitch in the PLC programming that causes this errant data uh, when these stations are running under emergency power. Uh, we'll work with our, 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 engine, our SCADA provider, William Kern, over the time to resolve it, but it's not a high priority item. Uh, this data is used for trending analysis only. Um, it has no impact over the operations of the facilities. Um, we did have one quote unquote no flow event as detected by our SCADA system. This is uh, um, an event that our SCADA computer back at the treatment plant goes for a period of time and gets no flow data from the pump station, so it sends out an alarm. So we go and check on the pump station, and uh, the, we had to reset the PLC, and that was done within in a timely manner, and there was no event as a result of that. Um, we continue with our uh, collection system hydrogen sulfide monitoring program. Um, we've uh, been monitoring at uh, key locations within the, the treatment plant and the pump station and pump stations. Uh, on uh, October 16th through the 24th uh, on Primrose Drive after installation of the check valve on the 8-inch line that services Primrose and Iris and that area, uh, the concentrations were down to an average of zero with a, uh, a peak of five, which is um, nominal. The um, 25th through the 26th, we were on Pine Point Road and we're one manhole upstream from Primrose. And that had an average concentration of 61 with a peak of 196. And then um, at uh, Pine Point at Primrose, after the installation of the check valve, we had a concentration of 100 and 210. And that's when we determined that that 
check valve wasn't doing what we anticipated it was doing, so we removed it. Um, on Pine Point Road, uh, we were we we did some pigging of the force main, um, and before the the force main was pigged, we had an average con concentration of about 60. And after we did the pigging, um, it went down to zero. Um, on an average, and then peaks were 115 and down to 10. Uh, then on November 6th to the 7th, um, on Pine Point again at Pump Station 1's terminus, we, we uh, had the monitor in again over that period of time, and we had an average concentration of 7 and 30, uh, with a peak of 30. So uh, the inline check valves, we were installed on the 16th, and the one on Pine Point Gravity Sewer, as I stated, was removed on the 27th. With the installation of the check valve on the sewer servicing primrose, that worked uh, well in controlling the H2S from migrating up that primrose line. And it, it, um, however, the check valve on the Pine Point service actually trapped H2S in the line. Um, consequently, remo remo we removed it. On uh, October 31st, we picked the line, as I mentioned, uh, uh, at pump station number one. Uh, this did have an immediate effect of the H2S production. On the, Can I just interrupt one second? Uh, this was a chemical pigging, pigging. Not, a, not a physical. Correct. It was a pigging. chemical pigging using uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay. So just let me explain that when we say we pig the force main, uh, it's a way of cleaning the deposits that accumulate on the walls of the force main. And so uh, when they mechanically clean a force main, they, they run what they call a pig through it, and it's a, it's a scouring device um, that gets pumped through the force main, and it cleans the accumulations of biomass off the walls of the force main. And uh, so this is a material with the biomass there that also depletes uh, oxygen from the, from the wastewater that's in the force main and also generates... Um, gases and odors so that uh, we're not running a physical pig through the line, but when we say we're pigging it right now, we're, we're, we're doing it with a chemical sky, so we're adding, I think you use caustic? Caustic, So exactly. we're, we're basically running caustic through it, and that's stripping the same material off those lines. So when we say we're pigging them, we're just cleaning those lines. And um, it also uh, raises the pH of the lines, which helps prevent the the, the the microbiology from um, working and, and generating H2S. Um, after a week, uh, we the average had only had increased up to seven milligrams per liter in that line, and uh, we monitored it again this week, um, and it had increased. Uh, we put the, the monitor in the line, um, actually uh, right in front of 193. We had we put the monitor in front of your house. And um, it was registering 10 initially, and then we did the same pig chemicals pigging of the line again on Tuesday, and the numbers dropped right back down to zero. So uh, we're actually going to increase the process to a weekly process and continue monitoring and see how that, that um, does in maintaining the H2S. Okay. Yes? Is there a a number that you're looking for, is it zero we're looking for, or what would be a normal number for? Uh, anything, you know, um, anything, you know, less than 10 is, I, I'd be comfortable with. Uh, you know, the, for, for us to enter a manhole, um, it, the, the number has to be less than 10. But that's what we'd expect in the normal? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not unusual to see, see yeah. concentrations in, in that, that, that range. At, at 10? Well, 10 or less. Yeah, 10 or less. 10, 10 or less. Yeah. Um, okay. the, the numbers that we were seeing were, were elevated, certainly elevated. Um, let's see. On 12 Sylvan Road, uh, there was a sewer plug uh, on November 2nd. And the on-call operator received a page at about 10.30 p.m. from dispatch concerning uh, the plug sewer. Um, and 
as you may recall, we've had two other plugged sewers at this location within the past three years. Um, Carl uh, Tucker was on call and he found that the downstream manhole was clear and a four inch and um, there was four inches of surcharge in the upstream manhole. Uh, the elevation difference between the first floor of the house and the upstream manhole invert was approximately 12 feet. So this clearly indicated to uh, Carl um, that the, the primary location of plug was within the service lateral that it was serving the home. Um, Carl contacted Glenn and I, and uh, we uh, TV'd the sewer line and found a grease plug had made its way down the sewer service and got hung up at, right at the main. Uh, we showed the homeowner the video and agreed that the root cause of his problem, uh, however, uh, was uh, his, uh, his sewer service. Um, however, the plug had made its way into our main, so we had to clear it. Uh, so Carl Glenn and I uh, jetted the main line sewer that night and uh, I took several pictures, pictures to show the progress um, uh, for you, uh, enjoyment. <laughs> uh, and although the, uh, the district was not liable, I did contact our insurance agent uh, company and documented this event. I also draft, drafted a letter that I want to send to the homeowner explaining their responsibilities. Uh, and requirements for using the sewer and that moving forward uh, that we will that they will be responsible for any costs incurred by the district responding to a similar type of that. Uh, um. Is it just grease? Yeah. Hmm. It was that's a uh, <laughs> that's a solid plug of grease considering mm -hmm. considering that this is the multiple multiple times that they've had this done is it's got to be something it was a year very, very unusual that they're doing in that it was a year and a half ago they had a similar event yeah and a year and a half prior to that um pump station six carol carol and paul will be working with william kern to install the control panel at the pump station uh this is a, a budgeted uh, uh fixed asset replacement item and um, is uh, now essentially complete we did get an order complaint from uh, 193 Pine Point Road. Um, uh, the sheeps are here, actually. And um, let's see. She was unable to make it to the October meeting and requested an audience with the board at this meeting. Um, so as I reported last month on uh, Thursday, October 12th, I received an order complaint from Ms. Shoup. Uh, uh, at, at the 193 address. Um, let's see, then I, I uh, just recently got a, a complaint on the 8th, uh, which I did go out and uh, measure the H2S concentrations within the collection system uh, at the time uh, in the area of her home at the terminus manholes where I measured it. Um, and I, I have that description in the email uh, and uh, back and forth with uh, Ms. Shoup. And uh, the next night, I got another email correspondence with her re with regards to odors. And I was unable to go out due to some family commitments, and, but I gave Aubrey a call, and Aubrey did go out at that time and did some walking around um, and uh, checking on, on odors in, in the area. Um, did you want to speak towards what you found at yeah. that point? Yeah, sure. So I, I did go out last Thursday night, the 9th, um, and I kind of wanted to take a look at the entire route, so I rolled my windows down starting. I got there around 8.15 or so. So from Route 1, I had my windows down the whole way. And like the whole time I was out there, I would describe, I had I smelled three very distinct odors during the whole route. So the first, the first thing I smelled was, as you're heading toward Pine Point, um, when you hit the marsh, you smell a sulfury kind of odor, but it's um, it has like a sort of like a decomposing grass or hay kind of smell in the background. So that's the first thing I noticed when you crossed the marsh, and it was present the whole time. And then the the second um, the second odor I smelled. Um, so I started going up the hill past Primrose and up the hill past Bailey's. The second thing I noticed. Um, started like around Pine Ledge 
um, Pine Ledge Road, which is on their drive, which is on the right as you're heading toward Pine Point. Um, and it was different kind of a smell. It sort of had a, a sharper odor. Um, it kind of it hits you sort of higher up in your nose a little bit. And it had a, a sort of sewagey odor in the, in the background, sulfurous in the background. But the first thing you notice is it's very sharp. So that um, I smelled from about Pine Ledge or just around Pine Ledge. And I stopped smelling it around Staddle Lane, which is the next road up on the right. It's a private drive. Um, so that's all before the terminus manhole. I, I pulled over along the shoulder and I stopped lots of times. I drove back and forth and probably looked like a bit of an a, you know, annoyance or nuisance or something. But I just I wanted to spend a, a lot of time and see what the winds would do and, and if I smelled anything different. I smelled nothing near the terminus manhole. I parked in Ken's parking lot for a while. I smelled nothing there. I parked at the Blue Point Congregational Church for a while, the cafe. I went to the bottom of the hill and parked um, at the, the, the facility that's next to where the nestling duck used to be, the old Thurlow's place. They were functioning, but I smelled nothing down there. I smelled a little bit of marsh smell because it was getting to be that low tide. Um, so then I went back up and I actually also parked at the Eastern Trail pump station. I probably spent about 20 minutes there. So right when I pulled into the Eastern Trail lot, you know, I smelled, um, I smelled sewage odor. And this is the sort of the third distinct smell that I smelled that night. It was more of a traditional sanitary sewage odor. It didn't have that grassy marsh smell in the background. And maybe the pumps were running at that time. And I parked there for 20 minutes. and. It was actually good for 20 minutes, and then I smelled it again. So, but I drove back and forth, um, and the odor that I smell up, you know, up near the sheep's house was a little bit different. It had, like I said, it's sharp. That's the best way I can describe it. Is it has a, a sharp odor at first, and it might have some sulfur in the background, but it's not the same thing I smell at the pump station. So, it wasn't at the terminus manhole though either, which where you'd expect to smell it. So that's, those are just my observations and kind of how I would describe you know, what I smelled. The other thing that's kind of interesting is I only smelled the odor like between Pine Ledge and um, Staddle when I was heading toward Pine Point. I don't smell it when I'm coming away from, I didn't smell it when I was coming away from Pine Point that night, so I, don't, I didn't look up what the winds were doing or anything like that. It's just my observations. So so the puzzle continues, basically, as far as what the source of the odors yeah. are and, and what the composition of them are. And that it um, definitely was not a pleasant smell. Yeah. Um, and I guess with the, without objection from the board, I, um, I'd like to give the Shoops an opportunity to um, address the board. I know they've come, mm -hmm. and we don't have a specific agenda item, but I think this would be a good time to... Uh, fit that in as long as nobody has an issue with it. Definitely. Otherwise, we'd have to it, we'd have to move the public comment part of the agenda. But I think it I think it would fit in right here. So why don't why don't you folks? Um, okay. Do you need me to speak up? Do you need me to stand up? Just just. I can try to project. If you <laughs> actually, you know, if you bring your chair up closer, I this microphone will probably pick you up just fine. Karen Shoup, 193 Pine Point Road. She just accurately described exactly where our house is between Pine Ledge and what is this? Staddle. 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 I don't even know. Yep, yeah, that's where we are. Um, for us, um, for us, something happened in June. Suddenly, we started experiencing smells that we've never experienced before. Um, and then, by the time August came, I could not have my windows open in my first floor of my house. I came home one night late, left my windows open, my whole first floor smelled, and I had to sleep upstairs that night. I mean, you shut the windows, it didn't matter, the smell was there. I, I appreciate your description because I feel like you really got to smell it that night. Um, and it's coming right out of our house. I mean, you know, the police, I had the police. David came out and said, you know, this is not sewer. So I said, my neighbor just hooked up his propane tank in June. Maybe it's his propane tank. And, this, and the fire department came out and they're like, no, it's sewer. So, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to explore our options. Um, and so I think what concerns me the most, I was, you know, really disappointed. I mean, my daughter goes to Blue Point School, so when I am picking her up around 5 p.m., I am smelling it. I was, you know, it's discouraging to me to find out it's smelling there all the time. Kids are talking about it on the playground now. 
and they're out there on the playground, and it's smelling. And this is disconcerting to me. I mean, I read the letter from the Blue Point School and the superintendent. I mean, the um, principal is saying it smells inside the school now. This is exactly what we're experiencing in our house. You know, we talked a lot about temperatures. We kept thinking, oh, because it's warm, you know, when it cools off. But we were, you know, when we go to do a fire in our fireplace, now it's pulling the air from the outside in. So as soon as you step away from your beautiful fireplace, the rest of your house smells like sewage. I'll give you guys some credit. The last two nights, the marsh has stank, which is great for you guys because I have not smelt it. But that's because, but I mean, you know, we've lived there for three years and we've never, we'll get, you know, whiffs of the marsh. I mean, we're kind of far from it where we are. Um, but we're also, I've lived from, we moved from Broadturn to Pine Point. So we've been driving through the marsh for 12 years now. So I can fully tell you it smells like the marsh the last two days. Um, one comment I was curious about is you did this whole treatment thing. I'm wondering, could that create smells? Because when we went out on Halloween and for the, the week following it, it just never stopped. It stopped. And it hasn't been constant, but for a week straight, it just creeped. Which makes us feel day. like there was an event, like there's something going on. Um, so as you know, we contacted the DEP because we didn't know if it was sanitary district or if it was something else going on. Um, you know, I think, and I don't know if you guys have had a chance to review it, but, um, you know, we looked at it, and basically I think what we've understood is that there seems to be a business that is new to the area, um, and it looks to me that they came in 2014, and they came into that location at 350 Pine Point Road, it's Ready Seafood, and they came here with the intention of expanding. So they moved in in 2014. It seems like they're now expanding. They came before the zoning board and the planning board last year to expand the loading dock. Clearly, they're expanding their business. The DEP found like the lobster shells and bands and step screens in when they did their inspection. The question I have for you is when businesses do that, are there repercussions for that? Like, I, I heard you say the residents who had the whole grease screen come in, they have to pay for that. I mean, are these. Is there a responsibility? Yes, there is a responsibility on their on their part to discharge um, appropriately into into our system, both uh, flow, strength, and conditions of, of materials. So, um, I think what stuck out for me in the DEP report was basically um, what he says that under normal conditions, sewer gases do not create odor problems when they are vented above the roof line of buildings or at pump stations. So if the system was working correctly, none of us would be smelling anything. And so what concerns me is there's an industrial park down there. They've been operating for years, and there's never been a problem. It seems like something's changed. And I know you've said you've only been here five years, and you came in, and there's an odor problem. I think our question is, is the odor problem only one or two businesses that are really creating this problem? And I'm not expecting an answer today, but I think this is kind of, the DEP is clearly saying you have a problem here. You have one person who is new, who is dumping their boiling water, lobster water, into the system. And if the system is operating correctly, it shouldn't smell, but are they supposed to be dumping this stuff into the system? Not the rubber bands. No, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> so who regulates what is being dumped in there? We, we do, and I, I have a meeting set up with them to to rectify that situation they need to uh, they're going to be required to um, provide some pretreatment in order to uh, reduce what they're discharging into the system and so, so when we watched the meeting last month you guys said you're going to be meeting with the businesses it's been almost a month and I think you know you met with the DEP the following day after your last meeting so I think I want to know to date you know how has that progress been going and what can we expect in the next month what can we expect by the next meeting <coughs> What type of timelines are imposed on these businesses who are creating such a hazard? I mean, I feel like these residents have been dealing with this forever, and, and we finally can kind of say where the problem is. And so I think I would like to know specifically, you know, when these meetings are happening and what their timelines are. So do we, I don't know if we have any, do we have sampling data yet from the discharge lines? Uh, no, we have... Um, we have some sampling data from upstream and downstream from where they're, they discharge into yeah. the collection system. So, so it's just a combination. So I guess just by way of explanation, um, typically when a business locates um, in, uh, in a building on the sewer line, they will 
contact us, we would discuss with them the nature of the wastewater going, that's going to be discharged and make a determination as to whether or not there's a pretreatment requirement um, for that business. And in this case, uh, there was a pre-existing business in that location. We never were contacted when the, by the owners when the business change happened. Uh, and we did not receive, as far as I know, any notice from them about um, expanding the business, changing the flows, changing the, the waste loading. And those are issues that we are concerned about at the district. And typically, a business would contact us. But there's no requirement for them to do that? Well, there's no requirement. Uh, there, there is a requirement for that to happen when there's a new business coming in to, to, to join our system. But in the case of a business being sold and a new tenant coming in, um, sometimes we're unaware of that change, which I think we were um, until this summer when the, the problem started to get. To you, like well, I think I would say yes, but sometimes sometimes people are legitimately unaware of that fact as a business person if they haven't been um, if they haven't been in a community connected to a sewer line. If, they, if they're new and their business, if it's a new business where they are just starting fresh as far as their own operations are concerned, they can, be, they can be ignorant of it, right. but that doesn't excuse them from the obligation of meeting the limits on the discharges that they're allowed to discharge. So, uh, so we have to meet with them, uh, get data on the strengths of the discharges and the material that's being discharged so that we can demonstrate that it in fact doesn't meet the requirements of the district. So we have to be able to demonstrate and prove to them that there's a problem with the strength of their wastewater and the waste loadings that we're receiving and then require them to fix the problem. So we're in the process of doing that now. Sometimes that happens really quickly. Uh, Dave is meeting with this particular business on Monday. Monday. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Right. And from, from there, we, we should get a timeline that gives us a sense of whether this is going to be like a quick solution or whether this is going to be like pulling teeth. Who knows? Right. Um, and we'll, go, we'll have to go a step at a time. We will get the problem fixed. And they will have to comply with our requirements as with regard to the strength of the discharge. Um, and in the meantime, we're proceeding forward with the other solutions that we um, ha have implemented uh, or in the process of implementing to introduce uh, oxygen at pump station number one to eliminate the formation of the gases in the pump station force main. So we'll be, we'll be super oxygenating the wastewater that's being pumped, which will hopefully eliminate all of the generation of any sulfides or hydrogen sulfide gas that's the source of, of the odors from our system. So we're proceeding with that. In addition, we're, we're going to be requiring um, the fish processing business to meet our requirements for discharge, which will also help us minimize that problem. And then we'll have to look at others that are contributory down there. If the problem continues and if our, if our monitoring and our testing indicates there's high strength waste being discharged from other locations, we'll have to continue to work as detectives, if you will, to find out where those flows are coming from. Because we have sewer lines with discharges coming into them, and we've got to isolate links of those, find out where the strengths of those discharges are unusual, and then go back and look at everybody who discharges along those lines who would have a potential for discharging a high strength waste and get in there and do inspections and so is the district data. aware of any new businesses down in that area in the last, I mean, you know, and I was having a hard time at the last meeting um, with the time frames. You know, some, some, I started small stuff seven years ago. 
people who live down by well, the we, we have had a, their smell and stuff in three no, years. No, we, we've had periodic odor problems in that line. And yeah. again, part of, the, part of the challenge is that there's lengthy force mains based on the geography of Scarborough. It's necessary to pump sewage uh, rather extensively. And so uh, we know we've had a force main, a, an odor issue there periodically. We don't think it's, we think it's been really exacerbated this past se summer season, starting late last spring until this summer that it's been a really uh, tremendous problem. I'd like to touch on that for a minute, because I think as, as someone who is just a residential, you know, person who is paying their 99 quarter lease, yep. when it sounds like one business or maybe two businesses, maybe three, are the sole cause of all this odor, but we're all paying for a whole odor abatement system to be put in mm -hmm. for two businesses. I mean, you know, well, like I said, that's why I understand you're doing your investigation, we, and I and I appreciate can that. I, can I speak to us for a minute? The the uh, Charlie had mentioned the, the law enforcement. This odor issues have historically been a problem down that area because of the law enforcement. Nothing to do with businesses. And that's the reason three years ago we started looking at different technologies to address those issues. This issue this past year is something new. Right, and that's and, what I'm here yeah, to talk yeah, about tonight yeah, is for yeah, what has so, happened to us since come June. And that's why, we're, to me personally, we're focusing on what the DEP is focusing so, on as well. So just to let me re just let me respond to that and yeah. say that something has changed systematically to cause a much more egregious problem. And uh, we've approached it trying to do two things. One is to try to provide intermittent relief uh, as best we can and uh, um, address the odors at pump station two and also on a on a more technical side, have a system designed for installation at the pump station one at Pine Point so that we cure the source of the odors. And we will require, uh, we will require businesses to implement um, pretreatment technology at these places of business as it's required based on what we find. And, uh, and if there's assessments that need to be made, we'll deal with that when the facts become clear to us. But there was a there was a need for us, in our opinion, there was a need for us to address the hydrogen sulfide generation from that law enforcement that we've known for several years has been a problem. And so we were moving to do that. We've accelerated that because of the exacerbation of the odor problem that started during the, this summer. And so it is a district problem. It's been complicated by changing conditions down there that we think stem from uh, commercial discharges or industrial discharges into, into the line. And we're going to pursue that and solve it. So people that are causing the problem will have to pay to solve that problem from their establishment. Um, but, but this the measure that we're implementing is not solely because of that one discharge. So I think I think I think it's not fair to say that everybody's paying to solve a problem. Well, that was my question. I don't I don't yeah. think it's I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate because we were moving to solve this problem before right. um, it got worse this summer. And I think everybody would have been thrilled when we got the implementation of this new technology online that the periodic problems that you've been having would go away, those that are caused by the sewer. And, and, uh, and I think everybody will be much happier because it's been so much worse this summer. Folks are going to be much happier when we get this new technology online late this winter or spring, I think will be the timeline for when that, for when that, when that happens. But in the meantime, we're going to continue to do our detective work with the businesses down there and make sure that we don't have people discharging high strength waste that cost the district more to treat. And that's why our user rates specify that there are surcharges on businesses 
that, that discharge high strength waste so that the ratepayers as a whole don't have to pick up the cost of treating waste for high strength businesses or industries. So we have a whole program in place to deal with that, but in general we don't have a lot of high strength discharges in the community, so we don't have to have a formal pretreatment program in place um, where we have to monitor it, but we'll do it as we'll do it as necessary. Right. And so we'll be doing our detective work. We'll be dealing with this one particular business to uh, isolate the waste stream that's yeah, coming I'm from them. Yeah, how and get it you know other fixed. other districts deal with fish processing. You know, I work on Portland Pier, and they take everything out in a sh in a in a truck in a truck. And so, I mean, you know, I just don't know kind of where the district says, okay, you know, I just can't accommodate you anymore, or we have to say you can only do this much. Again, we do the, we um, have to do the monitoring of the waste stream, and when the parameters in the waste stream exceed the limits that are... Where they can't pretreat and they'd be forced to truck it, basically? Well, it no, I mean, their pretreatment could be that they remove solids and truck them off-site. That, that could be part of the pretreatment program. But until we have that data, I can't sit here and tell you exactly what, it, what it's going to be. Right. It could be that they need to oxygenate their waste stream, remove solids, um, add chemicals. Add chemicals. There's, there's, there's a whole variety of options that can be presented, and they may have to hire an engineer to come back to us with a solution. It could be, a, could be physical equipment that they have to install um, for chemical additions and, and removal of solids. Um, could be, could be filtration systems. There's, there's just lots of options that they can that they can propose, um, but they will have to fix the problem. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just another comment. I work in a similar area in Portland, and I know that trucking wastewater and fish and byproduct out isn't the best option either. And uh, seeing a lot of tourists in town talking to people, it, uh, mm -hmm. knows, that isn't always the best method because uh, that certainly creates an odor in and of itself, so. Well, I mean, for, the, for us, the sure, we'll the fish what, for what we were saying yeah. is it's more easy yeah. to explain to your guests at your house the truck going by that smells like sewage than the fact that your house smells like sewage well, all the time. Yeah. Again. And so, I mean, you know, you're just kind of wondering what options are out there and how far a district will bend over backwards for, you know, one business when they're kind of... No, you know, it's not the way it works. Uh, we don't yeah. bend over backwards. Right. We don't bend over backwards to allow a business to break our rules. We require them to do whatever needs to be done within their business so that what they discharge is something that's compatible with our system. So we're not, we're not going to look the other way and we're not going to pick up the tab to treat high strength waste from businesses. Our, our rules and regulations sp specify that businesses pay surcharges for high strength waste discharges and that they have to treat their waste and pretreat it um, to get it to a level where we can handle it without obnoxious problems. So we're, we're equipped and we typically deal with these things on a routine basis. This happens to be a business that never came to us. Um, when it's situated there, we never had any data from them indicating what they were going to do or what they were proposing to discharge. And so now we've we're in a situation where we've got a business, a taxpayer on a location, and we've got to work with them and get it and get the problem resolved. And we're not bending over backwards to allow them to continue to discharge non-compliant waste streams. They'll have to fix the problem. And so right Charlie, can you touch on that for a second? So there are discharge standards that we have as a district, mm -hmm. and to some extent, we don't set those. So can you talk a little bit about what is non-compliant and how that actually comes well, from EPA to a certain degree and we can yeah, for, we can choose to ignore that if we even if we wanted to. I don't have the bylaws and for the rules and regulations with me, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quote BOD <coughs> concentrations, but I think right. it's I don't know. But the different elements that are in there. So I mean the two primary elements are suspended solids and and, and waste strength, uh, BOD biological oxygen demand, which is the the, the measure of the biochemical process that extracts uh, oxygen from the waste and causes odor, odor types of problems. And so we have, we have standards in our regulations for the maximum concentrations of solids and 
biochemical oxygen demand that, that a wastewater can contain and be discharged to our system. And it provides for surcharges to be paid by anybody who discharges beyond those amounts, and it also gives us the authority, both under our own rules and under federal guidelines, for us to require high strength discharges to pretreat their waste stream. So that's what's going to happen in this situation: is that we're going to we're going to be getting the we're going to be getting the hard data on the strength of the wastewater that's being discharged and going to be applying the rules and regulations and requiring them to do whatever is necessary to pretreat so that they meet the requirements for discharge to our system. With a new business coming in, they have an engineering study, they present all this stuff to us in advance and we, and we monitor the um, discharges by putting sampling devices in the sewer line that they discharge and we monitor that periodically to, to confirm that what they're discharging in, is in effect meets the requirements of their of permits from the district. This business didn't go through that process, so now we're is after the fact. Is the district have fines for that, it. or is it just kind of like, okay, let's catch you up? Well, I okay. think in this place we'll be, it'll probably be let's let's catch you up and, and deal with it and deal with it that way. But there could be there could be. Uh, charges on uh, discharges, high strength discharges that come to us that could be assessments based on capital um, I think one of the most frustrating parts of this whole thing is the town has zero control. I mean, to the point where they, can, they have no control over this business because it's allowed in this zone and the town has no business licensing, so because they're allowed in this. And, to me, it felt like, you know, as a, as a resident, I was like, there just seems to be a lack of communication where when someone, a new business is coming in, and I thought, you know, when John Reddy Seafood came before the zoning board, I mean, he had a representative, they were going before the planning board, they were pretty much all in line. So for, we never heard from when, um, when they're working with the planning board, and they're working with SEDCO, and I know you met with SEDCO, did they, were they working with SEDCO when they came in, in 2014? Because it's discouraging to me that no one said, you need to go to the sanitary district. Most and of the time, that's something the town the should be telling knowledge. these people. Most of the time, the communication is good, yeah. and new businesses come to us as a matter of routine. Like I said earlier, sometimes people who start these businesses are inexperienced. Sometimes they hope they can get away with not doing it. Like moved out an old neighborhood complaining and try to slip into a new one. Exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know the motivation. I can't tell you where these folks came from. I can't tell you what their experience was. I don't know why they didn't come to us. And it may have been that they just didn't know. It may have been that they were being trying to be deceitful and figure they could get away with something. Maybe they knew they had high strength waste and they didn't have the, the money to pay for a pretreatment system. I don't know. I'm right. not, not, not going to sit here and attribute motives to them. No, so, you can find their zoning board and planning board applications online. And, um, I mean, they came here to expand. And I think that's why I'm not letting this go, even though this whole odor abatement thing, this whole system's going in, because it seems like one of the biggest culprits is only here to expand. Well, and so people, I understand that you're putting in this system to deal with odor, but now it's kicked up a whole new notch. And yes. we're now experiencing it at a part of Pine Point that we've never experienced it before. And as you said, it's a smell that is different. And that's what we've been trying to say. And I think, you know, we are anxious to see if this works, but I want to be prepared if it doesn't. If they pick up production and they expand their loading dock even more, because in their zone, they're allowed to do that. Someone has to, at some point, say, hey, you can't make the whole neighborhood stink. And basically, at, from my understanding with the DP and with the town, it's you guys. You have the control to say you can't dump in our system. You cannot make this whole neighborhood smell. And if it's operating, your system's operating correctly, it shouldn't smell at all. Well, I think what I've been telling you yeah. is that's the process we'll be going through. And and beyond that, yeah. I mean, we can sit here and talk about the fact that it smells and it's worse than it's been, and we think that there's a culprit. Right. But until we have the hard data so that we can deal with them, if we need to play hardball, we need to have the right. data, we have the right to go in and sample, yeah. and we'll do that. And if we have to get a court order to do it, we can do that too. But most of the time, 
uh, folks are agreeable to trying to resolve the problem. I would assume this is a legitimate business enterprise that they're going to want to be good citizens and want to cooperate and solve the problem. We know we have a problem and an issue, and we think once we have the documentation, we'll be able to prove that they're part of the problem. They may not be the whole problem, but again, well, I think we'll that's what was frustrating about. I watched the last meeting, which I never thought I would ever watch the sanitary district meeting. I've never even watched my own zoning board meetings, but I watched yours. And but I never thought I'd move to Pine Point Road and not be able to open my windows. And so I understand that you're working with these businesses. If your bylaws don't have them, I encourage you to maybe have timelines. So you can turn to a business and say, it's out of my hands. Here's your warning. You have 30 days to do this report because you have a school system. You have a school of kindergartner, first graders, and second graders, and a whole staff who's breathing this in all day long. And I feel like there needs to be more steps that can be swiftly taken when it comes to this, to this step. <coughs> And I mean, I mean, I haven't heard otherwise. Well, I think we'll lines. be, I think we'll be communicating with the school, also, um, to suggest measures that they might be able to take to avoid some of the issues. But um, I would love to that's hear another, those, I mean, but that's we're another. That's another. Same issues we are. That 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 conversation's got to happen with them. I'm not going to sit here and talk about what what that discussion, you know, might be. So. Um, I, I just privileged? don't. I don't think. Well, it's it's not privileged, but it hasn't happened. So there's right. no there's no information to share. I guess on I'm that wondering what you know. Like these neighbors have the student events, even though they're not allowed, they have them, and so we can't do it because they're not allowed. Mm -hmm. and well, so it's also it's also you can drive down the road and see who's got them and see where it smells in the road. Yeah. I mean, it's and well, so, I mean, it's obvious it to put it one way. Yeah, we um, we think that's we think that's going to change. Yeah. Look. <laughs> Let me say this without, without belaboring this, and I understand that you're upset and, and we all know that you're not happy, and we're not happy about the situation either. We are going to stay with it and solve the problem, but I don't think there's any point in us sitting here trying to, trying to ascribe blame to different individuals or motivations to folks. Um, we have the tools to resolve the problem. We will resolve the problem. If there's expenses to those businesses, they're going to have to pay those expenses, whatever they whatever they turn out to be. I can't sit here and speculate what dollar amounts they might be, um, but uh, you know we we are committed to eliminating this odor problem from our system. And rest assured, it's a high priority for us. We're we're accelerating our plan to get this technology installed at Pump Station 1, and we'll be working with the businesses down there that we think are uh, associated with the problem and get that resolved. And that's all that I Are you I willing to of. offer a timeline? I mean, I know when Alex called, my husband called in June, we were being told, you know, maybe August. in August it would be done by January or June or March, and I mean, I think, you know, there are options for residents personally that they can take, but if you're saying, hey, this is going to be up and running by March, you know, I think, I think it just... Well, I think, I think our, in my mind, we're in the, I don't know where we're at in the engineering of the project, but my understanding and expectation is by late winter, early spring, it will be, it will be up and running. And with regard to solving the problem with the businesses, I can't give you a timeline on that until after the meetings happen and we get some well, maybe indication Maybe give an example responses. of what happens. I mean, this can't be the first business that you've been through this with. To this extent, yes. Uh, in, in Scarborough, absolutely. Most of the we time... We had this issue. Most of the time, well, all of the time, these issues are dealt with in advance before businesses even right. situate. So this is an unusual situation. And we're not happy about it. Um, I guess a question I have is, is the engineering process usually like six months on something like this? Or are there delays involved? What's, because I mean, we were in November, December back in was it August. I, or no, maybe it was December. But, and then it got pushed out to late spring and then we're here in June. I mean, what's... Well, I think we're talking so about different, we're talking about different measures. Different project, different yeah. project. So, okay. so November, this, this fall, we got the, we got the ODA system installed at pump station two on Eastern, okay. on Eastern Road. So that was, uh, that was the timeline, that was the November okay. timeline. The, the, uh, 
the backflow valves on the gravity sewer lines. That was the fall timeline to, to try and take the measures that we could to try and alleviate the, uh, the symptom, which is the odor, and try and control that. We had the, we had the timeline of uh, early summer for the original timeline for the oxygenation system to go in at pump station number one. And we've moved that up to late winter, spring, as fast as we can get the engineering details done. And uh, I think we've got the I think we've got the equipment. We pre-purchased the equipment, yeah. you know, so because so that's a long lead item, right? Right. So so once as soon as we have the engineering part of that done, then we'll be able to go to installation. Is it in-house engineering or is it subbed out? No, it's subbed it's subbed out. Okay. Um, I guess I'm not a, certainly not a sanitary engineer, <laughs> but not very familiar with how the different gravity flows and you know certainly along. Outside of the main, there are other streets that flow uphill towards the main. I don't know how that works, but nothing flows uphill. Right. The so only way the only way it flows the uphill is when it's pumped. Versus the big pump on the main, is that how that works? No. Usually, with the sewers of gravity sewers in, and they run against grade, and they tend to get deep. Okay. Um, but everything that everything at Pine Point flows by gravity to pump station number one, which is across from. Uh, Bailey's. And then it's pumped up Pine Point Road to the terminal manhole, which is in front of but then 219. 219. I guess everything before it reaches the top of the hill by the water tower can is there. All goes down, all, all goes, goes back, back down, down hill. and gets yep. pumped up. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so what I noticed actually the other night when we called about the smell and I went out and drove around the neighborhood, was, there's a little bit of a false peak on the hill there. By right where you're smelling a firehouse between Staten mm -hmm. and Pine Ledge, is that potentially why you know you pick out the line and then at 219 it smells better? You know your odor detector shows nothing, but then at our house it smells worse than it ever has. It'd be a continuous pitch, you know the sewer. Oh, so it's just, it even just, it might be a little dip. Yeah, 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 the sewer line is no, the sewer line is pretty not much the grade. uniform okay. grade. So it yeah. doesn't go up and down. Gravity sewer goes consistently downhill. Force mains. That's great. Right. Okay, yeah. Force mains might force mains might fluctuate, but uh, the gravity the gravity lines are going to run pretty much constant grade. Sometimes the grade changes a little bit, but they're always running constantly downhill. To answer your strange. question, though, you had sort of asked about some of the, the side the side roads that look like they do come up. We do have some private pump stations in Scarborough, so sometimes you may see that that yeah. there's a private pump station that pumps up to the main in the road. So okay. it's a good observation. Yeah, like he goes It's like a dead end that goes downhill right. right by the yeah. school there. There's, yeah. a, there's actually a pump station at, at the end. So sometimes there are private pump stations, and sometimes, like Charlie said, the the pipe is just really deep, so and it right. and it yeah. even though the road right. might go uphill, the yeah. pipe no. is still no. like ten feet under. Yeah. So, but it means good observation. There are some of those. So, we're, gonna, we're committed to solving the problem. We we feel badly, you know, that you've had to suffer with the inconvenience and the nuisance of it, and we we, re we recognize that. Um, you know, it's nothing that we feel good about, but we're not ducking the problem. We're committed to solving it, and we're going to do whatever it takes to fix it. And uh, so. I have two Hopefully. requests. If it's possible, would you guys be willing to upload the DEP report to your website so I can direct people so I don't have to email it to everyone? Is that something you can put on your website for people to access? That report right there? Yeah. yeah. Is that something that we could do? Yeah. And then is it possible at the next meeting to specifically address what has happened in the last month, what you've gathered? I mean, you said you're meeting with them on Monday. Is that something that can be shared? He'll I'll, up, I'll yeah, in uh, my operations report, I, like with the, um, the odor logging that I've been doing, it's something that has been ongoing now. It actually even predates any of your well, issues. We, we can probably put a we can probably put an agenda item yeah. on specifically, you know, to discuss mm -hmm. the, up, the update on that on that problem. That You've been be keeping our own log for about a month now. Is that anything you guys are interested in, or is that yeah? Cool? If you give that to give that yeah, to Dave, Matt, Mike, it might help. Yeah, said to keep your own log. We've been doing it because we were getting a lot. You know, it's low tide, it's high tide. We're like, you know, does it have to do with the tide? So we started kind of doing that. But then we had that whole week where it just was all the time, and I kind of said, forget the tides for a minute. Um, but it, now it's backed off um, where it was all that time. But um, I mean, we have kept a log. 
but again, I mean, I don't, I, I can't identify what the smell is. I really feel like yeah. your description pinpointed it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not what we're smelling when we're driving by the Eastern Trail. It's something that's coming right out of our house. It's something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to us. Um, you know, like I said, clearly this is an, a, not a great situation, and um, you'll probably be seeing me if it still smells, because I, mm -hmm. I just like to keep updated and kind of mm -hmm. see what's kind of going on. Um, you know, we do have concerns. We've only lived there three years, and this is something that we've only experienced in the last four or five months. So for us, something has changed. Something's happening. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all the work you're doing in the investigating. Um, we appreciate it. So thank you. Thanks thank for, you for coming. coming. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we're going to do our best. Yep. That's all we can do. And uh, I believe our best will cure the problem. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. Um, moving on, on the 27th, Matt Height did, as we just talked about, uh, from DEP conducted his biannual inspection of the plant, and I, I as we referenced, we, I brought him out to Pump Station 2 and Primrose Lane and Pump Station 1 and um, 193 Pine Point, and uh, Overall, the inspection went very well. Um, he, he, we, since his, uh, since I provided you with a packet, we did receive his uh, report, um, and uh, as she noted, the in the report there is the uh, identification of the, um, uh, the the banding for lobster shells, the lobsters on on the influence screen that. Uh, you know, he, he does these reports, he comes twice a year, every six months, and it's something that wasn't there a year, you know, six months ago. So uh, this is, is something, you know, as we all talked about, something new. Um, at the time of his inspection, there, there was no odor. <laughs> um, you know, sorry to say, but, or glad to say. Um, so he, you know, he, he even commented on that with regards to in his report that the, you know there was only a small perceivable odor at, at uh, pump station two, um, but we talked a lot about what we are proposing to do and what, what, we, what we have done, what we're proposing to do, um, and he had some you know, good insights and thoughts and generally feel that we're moving in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> There was a Scarborough Leader article that was published uh, highlighting the odor issues. It more focused on the uh, Pine Point Primrose Iris Drive area. Um, and I, I provided a copy of that in the packet. I thought actually it was a fairly uh, well, well written article, very fair. Um, let's see. The, uh, we had a windstorm, as we all know. <laughs> a little windy the other day uh, on the 30th. Uh, caused uh, 13 pump stations to lose power plus the plant, and um, the, uh, the preparation that we have done over the years, getting generators at all our pump stations, made this event actually fairly non-eventful for us. Um, you know, uh, Glenn ended up staying at the plant. Uh, overnight on uh, the Tuesday night because not only did we lose power at the plant, but we lost communication. And so he could monitor the data system, and which uh, also monitors all of our pump stations via radio. So uh, just to make sure nothing happened, so we'd be able to respond to the, the system. We ended up spending about uh, just shy of $4,000 in fuel. Uh, that's been submitted to FEMA for a potential uh, refund. Um, Could you say that again, you lost fuel? No, so we spent, we, we used about $4,000 of fuel running our generators. We were out at the plant for um, about two and a half days, and I got to commend the town, um, the fire department, uh, the police department, and CMP in uh, uh, working with us to um, prioritize getting our systems back on commercial power. Um, you know, emergency generators are just that, you know, we don't want to rely on them for any extended period of time. So they, they did a really uh, great job coordinating those efforts. And I greatly appreciated it. Um, and uh, finally, uh, uh, the Jetsi uh, Management Training School is uh, 
in its ninth year, and this year of, uh, I, I actually am sending Rudy Hale, uh, who this year is kind of taken on the role of uh, managing the collection systems, and he started that, and uh, it's a 11-month um, 11, 11 training program, and Glenn at the plant went through it a number of years ago, uh, spoke of it very highly, and uh, Rudy has attended one course, and he was absolutely thrilled with what he got out of it in just the one day that he's been at it so far, so it's, it's a great program that the Jet Sea puts on. Um, and that's it with regards to my operations report. Questions, comments? One sort of interesting observation. So back to the odor issue, I saw that we the valve that was put in the line um, was taken out the same day that um, that my, that Matt was here. It was removed the twenty seventh. Was it removed like before he was here? Or after? Yeah, that's just coincidental. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah. yeah, I know, but I mean, it was removed in the morning. You know, when, when we put it in. Um, well, we put the two two check valves in the intent, to, you know, because they were at drop the drop manhole, so when mm -hmm. the flow is coming down, and uh, the aerating and releasing a lot of gases, and it's very evident in the in, in the manhole, um, and that primrose sewer was was is the uh, the lower sewer of the two, and so. The, the thought process was that we were thinking that the, the sewer coming down Pine Point was uh, you know, coming through the drop manhole, releasing all the gases, and uh, migrating up Primrose and back up Pine Point. So that's why we uh, cut the check valves and installed them. And then um, the subsequent testing showed that the Primrose one was doing what we wanted it to do. The one on the Pine Point leg uh, was actually exacerbating the problem upstream, so we you know, chose to remove it, and it just so happened to be the same day that was. Yeah, all I just all I wondered is if it was before or after he was there. Was it was before. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for the long no, answer. No, it's okay. No, I love the long answer. Yeah. Good job. The long answer. Anything Any else? Other, no, that's it. Other questions? Thank you, Dave. Next item is correspondence. Uh, I've been communicating with Amy Taylor at the Blue Point School. I've provided you a copy with her uh, correspondence. And um, you know, she was at the last month's meeting, uh, but did not speak. Uh, she has volunteered to be the contact person for the school. I, uh, and I reached out a couple times to her, uh, most recently on the 7th, asking how the odors had been recently. And at that time, she said they had not been bad. But as of late, although on the 9th, she did email me saying that, uh, uh, that there were odors at school you know, that day. And it, it, the 9th was uh, the morning after um, I went out to uh, Primrose as a result of that. And the 9th was the, night, the same night that you went out there. So uh, of course, you know, it was, uh, corresponds with that. Questions? No, just not. Okay, item six is old business. Actually, it's item seven. Oh, item six. Yeah. Old business, there is no old business. Yep. Um, item seven, new business, Burnham Brookside Apartments, Dunstan Village. Uh, on behalf of Burnham Brookside LLC, Sebago Technics requested request that the Sanitary District uh, Board of Trustees allow the district to accept the sanitary sewer flows from the proposed Burnham Brookside apartment units to be located in Dunstan Village. As you recall, the district has been involved with the Dunstan Crossing subdivision since originally approved uh, uh, of 264 residential development off of Broad Turn Road and Route 1 in 2006. The first three phases of the development have been constructed, including a gravity sewer um, system within the project and a section of Broad Turn Road to the pump station, which was constructed by the applicant on Broad Turn Road. And the pump station has since been conveyed over to the district. The fourth phase was recently approved and is currently under construction. 
In July, the board approved the four townhouses and the private sewer that is currently under construction on this lot. And Building 5 was shown on those plans, but was not part of that request or, of the, or part of the approval. Uh, the proposal for the Burnham Brookside apartment bill, uh, is, uh, which is Building H5, consists of 32 single bedroom apartments and four studio apartments. The building will utilize the sewer service, which was constructed in conjunction with the townhouses, which were approved. And I recommend uh, the approval with the following conditions. Uh, per our sewer regulations, each dwelling unit is allocated 200 gallons per day. With that, the total approved flow for the 36 residential dwelling units is, excuse me, 7,200 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts are subject to additional approvals. All 36 residential units are subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 15.72 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news record construction cost index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 36 dwelling units is $113,184 and any, any additional dwelling units are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. And uh, this fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. Uh, the proposed project discharges into our private sewer system that shall remain private and the operation and maintenance of the system shall be the responsibility of the owner and owners and uh, pro provide a executed copy of the de declaration of condominium documents um, and in including any attachments that are part of that document. Um, the sewer permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to that, uh, no site sewer work shall be completed. And finally, uh, professionally surveyed electronic georeference CAD drawings and a stamped PDF of CAD drawing and a stamped copy, paper copy, be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Is Moved and seconded. Any comments, discussion? The, uh, the condominium documents should include this, the agreements for uh, utilization of the sewer lines. Correct. Between the two private property owners. Yes. Crystal clear. Yes. Uh, okay. And I assume then that the same thing is going to happen with regard to their their parking. I know it's none of our business, but I'm just curious. That there's going to be a provision in those documents. I've seen the documents. Uh, the ones provided to me are not executed, and yeah, they do address parking. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I had a, just a question on yes, where our public line. Yeah, we're, we're the public line is in, I forget the name of the road, uh, where Sherman Circle comes in to Stewart Drive. Stewart Drive. The public line is in Stewart Drive. Okay, so they own everything mm -hmm. from Stewart Drive to the building. Yep. Any other questions? All those in favor of the motion? Unanimous, not opposed. Thank you, Dave.
missed it. I actually flew up in the, in the midst of it, which I was surprised to leave. But um, yeah, I, I heard it was quite an event. And uh, thanks to everybody the staff for taking care of the system and making sure things went seamlessly. And I uh, also want to thank Dave and Aubrey for coming out and spending some extra time and helping out with the unfortunate situation down on Pine Point. Um, and reiterate again from the trustee perspective. We, we hear the pain down there and we certainly want to do whatever we can to rectify the situation as, as fast as we can. So uh, thanks, Dave, for all your efforts there and extra work we put in there. And answering the nose, can, the noise, yeah, sorry, the smell complaints, <laughs> not the noise complaints, the smell complaints that are coming in feverishly and uh, really appreciate the extra time you're putting in. Thank you. Yeah. Um, first, I'd like to welcome Judy to the board. Then I want to thank Rob for his year, years of service. Uh, I appreciated his insights, his humor, and his reminder of all the events of high school. Appreciate um, thank you, Wendy, for that 13 page set of meetings that very few. Uh, in it. That was an excellent, nice job. Um, nice to Glenn for his dedication and overnight work at the district. Thank you, Dave, for all the stuff you've been doing, especially with the older complaints. Um, hopefully, as with all the other trustees, I fervently hope to uh, see an end to the odors, the excessive odors. I will remind people this is a sanitary district. We will never remove all odors, ever. It's just the nature of what we do, but we'll do the best we can to minimize them and prevent public health issues. Um, that's it. Judy. Judy. Um, again, I'm so pleased to be here, part of this wonderful board. I'm looking forward, as I said, to, to get up to speed and to be able to contribute in a helpful manner. And I'm um, looking forward to learning. There's a lot to learn. I read all this and I, oh my, I'll be there. I'll, I'll get there. So thank you all and thank you for uh, such a warm welcome. Everybody <laughs> welcome you very, very nicely. Particularly you, you were lovely. Thank you. You were welcome. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Ben? Um, I want to thank the for coming down tonight. Uh, expressing their, uh, their concerns. I think we're, we're going to do something here. We're definitely going to do something. Here. It's just things don't happen overnight. It's unfortunate. I'd like to welcome Judy and uh, say goodbye to Rod and thank him for his time that he spent on the board. All right, so that's, was that to look a broken record? Welcome, Judy. Nice, to, nice to have another lady on the board also, I'm going to say. Uh, thanks to Rob McSorley. Again, I work with him professionally. He does a lot in Long Creek. He's been wonderful to work with there and, and also appreciated the experience he brought to the board. Um, I want to echo thanks to Glenn for taking one for the team and staying over at the plant. Um, but I guess at least he had light and so on and so forth. So out of my house, we were out for like a week, almost a week. I um, wanted to thank Dave for, um, for coordinating the employee appreciation dinner just uh, last week, a week and a half ago. That was wonderful. Uh, I know it doesn't, it seems like forever. Month ago, wasn't it? But yeah, no, just, just a week and a half, I think. Anyway, and thanks to all the employees who took time to come down. It was a nice night. Um, and again, I want to reiterate, we have a fantastic staff. And um, I love it that we, we have that kind of event to honor them and show those things. Um, and then lastly, kind of along the same lines there, I'm really pleased that we are sending two staff to the Jet Sea Management Candidate School this year. It is an excellent program. That is an investment in our staff that will pay off in no time at all. So I appreciate the board and for Dave having two staff who are willing and ready to take that step. So thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I'll reiterate the welcome to you, Judy, and uh, there is quite a bit to learn, but you don't have to learn the technical part. That'll come, that'll come gradually. You'll, you'll come to understand the concepts, I'm sure, but uh, um, I think, the, uh, I think the, the staff is very competent, and you don't have to worry about 
reviewing in detail any of the technical recommendations that, the, that David makes. Um, sometimes as a board we focus in on some of that stuff probably more, but he always he always uh, has the right answer for us and we seldom have to make any uh, modifications to any of his recommendations. Um, I also would like to thank the staff uh, for this service through this really serious storm event. And I think the I think the service that we're able to maintain 24-7 there speaks well of the preparedness of the staff and uh, the district's overall efforts to get us in a position where we can have an event like this and not have sewer discharges running down the street, which unfortunately does happen in some areas when, uh, when an event like this occurs. Uh, it's funny because when you have a storm like event like that, a lot of times the actual usage goes up, not down, because folks are home at times when they typically aren't. Uh, so again, I'd like to congratulate the staff and thank them for their dedication and, and commitment and their willingness to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I would like to thank the town departments for uh, coordinating the power restora restoration and, and helping to prioritize to get that power back to our facilities. Um, I think we always strive to have great cooperation between the district and the town, uh, and, uh, and I think that uh, it's kind of a mutual effort, and in this case, they really did a great job advocating for us and helping us to get things back online. I would like to ask the superintendent to reach out to SEDCO and to the planning board uh, just as a follow-up from this situation that we're dealing with at Pine Point with regard to businesses that are uh, reaching out to them and indicating their desire to locate into town to try to be sure that they reach out to us so that we don't have to fix problems after the fact that we can stay ahead of the curve with regard to new businesses coming to town. It's kind of evident to me that this kind of slipped through the cracks somehow. And uh, Sedco is actually attending the meeting on Monday. Uh, I think that'd be great. But again, I'm talking about future. Yeah. I'm talking about future situations where somebody else approaches them, looking for a place to do business. And uh, I think you know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I think that uh, it should be a routine pro forma thing that they direct folks uh, to us, so that we don't have to go into this after the fact kind of thing, which can get adversarial and be unpleasant. So we want to avoid those situations. And uh, so I just I just think it would be prudent to go ahead and reach out that way. And to keep, I, I intended to be very constructive. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about how we typically, typically the coordination happens. For some reason it didn't, and I just would like to bring that formally to their attention so that we can reemphasize the need to be talking with these prospective businesses. Um, and I would like to thank Rob McSorley for nine years, three terms as a trustee. Uh, he was really dedicated to the district. He was knowledgeable. He brought a lot of insight uh, into uh, the issues that we deal with um, either on a, a system basis or on an individual project review basis. Uh, thank him for that. Uh, I think his I think his commitment to public service is truly admirable, and I hope he'll consider future public service uh, in the future. I'd encourage him to uh, monitor opportunities to serve. I think he's good at it, and uh, it was a pleasure to work with him, and I just wish him well. And with that, I guess we're ready to, uh, ready to adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of adjourning. Unanimous. Thank you. We're adjourned. I don't get to vote. <laughs> I don't get to vote.